Hi everyone, it's Eric from ecartman12.blogspot.com and this is my unboxing and review of the Samsung Galaxy Y mobile phone. Now, Y, as you can see, stands for young. This is the budget end of the market mobile phone from Samsung. And let's unbox it. Now, I'd like to say a big thank you to Vodafone for supplying me with this handset to review. You can p purchase this handset from them on pay as you go for £100 or you can pick it up free on contract for £10.50 a month. Now, please keep in mind this has been out with other reviewers, so when you get it, it'll be more neatly packaged. And I've also had it out for testing, so here is the handset. Put that to the side, I'll show you that a little bit closer in a minute. Let's see what else we get inside the box. Okay, now first we have a micro SD card reader. So you can stick your micro SD card into that and you can stick it into your computer. Next we have quick start guide and we also got a charger which has some one of the most thinnest wires I've ever seen for a charger before but yeah three pin UK plug and then you stick this mini USB uh, part right over here into the phone and it'll charge the device so that's everything inside the f inside the box oh and uh, something to keep in mind this al it also does come with uh, mini USB to full size USB in the box as well but it just didn't come with this particular review unit for some reason okay so let's take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Y so it's got this little pr protector film which I'll take off now let's give you a product tour of the handset now on the front you have a 3 inch screen you have the earpiece when you're making and taking calls you've got two touch sensitive buttons here this is a menu button and a back button neither of them light or backlit and neither of them have tactile feedback and that is one of the negative points you also have a touch uh, a physical button right over here which uh, is the home button at the bottom over here you have a microphone pickup and this little nook over here which allows you to take, take off the back gain access to the battery and your sim card at the side here you've got a single button which acts as the power on off button at the side over here you got a little lanyard attachment and also volume rockers at the back you got a 2 megapixel camera and speaker and you also have got this little USB connection which allows you to charge and synchronize the device and you also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack so that's all fair and dandy that we got that out of the way now let's get into the handset now this is running Android version 2.3.5 also known as gingerbread it has Bluetooth version 3 and also 802.11 B, G and N Wi-Fi speeds as well. And the measurements are 104 by 58 millimeters and just 11.5 millimeters thick. And also weighs comes out 97 grams, which is nice and light in the hand. It also has an 832 megahertz processor, which is quite impressive when you think about the price of this, which is just 100 pounds on pay as you go. And it is nice and responsive, the processor. You can you do notice that in the performance. However, it does tend to slow down at times. And there is this one major sort of problem. This might be with all the handsets, or it might be with my review unit. Uh, but I'll get onto that later. Now, let's talk about my bad points. The camera. It's all right for photos. But for video, absolutely rubbish. I wouldn't even bother even going there. It's going to record at 320 by 240 QVGA resolution. The microphone for that is absolutely rubbish as well. The camera for taking photos, I will show you one of the photos. Let's go into the gallery. And also, this leads on nicely to one of the sort of major, major problems I'm experiencing. Might be just with this review unit, might not happen if you purchase this handset, but the accelerometer not really interested it tends to uh, what w the problem is with the, what I've been experiencing is that it's times where it always happens most of the time and you always have to restart the handset and then the accelerometer works again and as you can see during this review it's already happened again so this uh, happens with uh, all games when you're using it on games or if you're using it on internet however on games it's not an issue but how if you're using it on the internet or stuff like that it's absolutely awful uh, but as you can see the picture looks sort of washed out not very good accurate colors so I wouldn't really bother with a camera 2 megapixels you're not going to expect much with that now another thing I'm not really happy with is there's no, t no notification LED lights normally Android tends to always have LED lights saying when you got a new notification in the notification bar and whether you also have you know whether your phone is 
uh, still needs charging or is done charging, this doesn't have it. And also, I don't like that these two touch-sensitive buttons, the menu button and the back button, don't light up. Another thing which ain't that good is live wallpapers. Now, I've got some wallpapers which I installed here. It didn't come with any, so you have to put, get them yourself. When you set them, they do take some long time. And as you can see, they're not formatting well on the screen. You can see this little bumper thing right over here that's not going well. As you can see, when I'm swiping between, it disappears. But then, there you go, it shows up again. It's because it's not formatting well on the 3 inch screen. I think Samsung should have done a minimum of, of 3.2 inches and then it, it would have dealt with, with more software. Whereas it keeps struggling with many things because of the low resolution screen and its size. Not all games format well on the screen either. Let's load up Angry Birds. And uh, Fruit Ninja tends to be a bit of a laggy mess as well. However, after a while it does tend to uh, work properly. Just really quite strange. As you can see, it's not really formatting the game very well on this size screen. Let's just lay it on here. And zoom in. You do get nice vivid colours, though, on this screen. Even though, there are, even though it does look sort of pixelated and stuff, you do get really nice colours on this screen. Okay, let's quickly get in here and play a quick game. Okay, uh... Wow, I got this uploaded to YouTube and caught it as well. However, I didn't beat my high score. <laughs> oh, come on, that was awesome. You can only give me two stars for that. <laughs> I don't want to play now. But, as you can see, Angry Birds did run alright. Uh, just a little bit of lag, though, when you're playing it. I tend to notice quite a bit of lag. I'm not going to load up Fruit Ninja because I did notice quite a few, pro quite a few problems with that. Sorry for the uh, messing up zooming on the camera there. But gaming-wise, only do the 2D platformers types, because 3D games do not work on this. Take my word for it, they really don't work. Now, let's go into the YouTube application. Okay, and uh, here's my videos. One of my videos already loaded. Let's go into here. Now, this will give you a uh, an idea of the volume and also the viewing angles. Increase the volume. Quite, quite strangely, the accelerometer is working right here. Work well on Desire or Desire S because it would be too graphic intensive and the single core processor would not support it. Okay, so uh, viewing angles are all right. However, when you're got it like this way and you turn this way, it's almost unviewable. The screen, very terrible viewing angle right there. But uh, overall, watching YouTube videos is still pretty good on here, and the speaker. It doesn't really produce a very loud noise, but it's not bad either. Um, it's no distortion at all, I've noticed. Okay, so let's actually go into the memo application. And I'll show you the keyboard on the Samsung Galaxy Y. Now, this is the stock keyboard that it comes with, and they're very, very small keys. Uh, so let's write down, this is a test. My god, it's got terrible sort of autocorrection. Test. Well, I've done better now, but really, trust me, most of the time I do bad. Let's see, is the accelerometer going to work now? No, it's not. That's one of the problems I'm experiencing with this phone, is that you're going to, like I said, always have to give it a restart. But that's this keyboard. Another keyboard that Samsung also supply with this handset is their swipe input method. Okay, so let's do this quickly. This is if a test. And I only got test right. To tell you the truth, the swipe keyboard ain't anything special either. And instead of pressing A, I pressed the caps lock uh, accidentally. It's just horrible using this keyboard. It's always a chore using this damn keyboard. Let's go to this third party keyboard I downloaded. Yeah, this is the keyboard that the makers of Dragon Naturally Speaking developed. So, you can also use the keyboard. So, using the keyboard on this, I'll try it on this. 
is a test. It's easier to type on this keyboard. You also have swiping that you can do, see? You also have this other strange way, which is let you write your own text. So this is, when that's done, you just do a space, A, space, then write down the stuff again. Test, as you see, you can do capitalization and all that. That looks great, but the real kicker right here is, this is a test. Voice recognition. As you can see, this is a test. So, I would highly recommend you get this keyboard if you're purchasing this phone. Uh, you can't really use the built-in keyboards with this phone uh, with your thumbs. You're better off using your fingers, because I've really found that it's pretty awful using your thumbs. If you have medium-sized hands like I do, you're, that, then you're going to have problems. If you have small-sized hands, then you won't have any problems. Now, let's talk about the good stuff. Speed dial entry. That's one of the things I really like. And that's, this is as a phone. The reasonably sized dial pad. Now, as you can see, speed dial entry. I go into settings. Choose between 2 to 9. That is voicemail, don't touch that. 2 to 9. If you uh, tap on it. Oh, it's showing my contacts. We have to blur the screen out here. But basically, you can tap on this and you can select your contacts. And then all you have to do is when you enter the dial pad, just tap and hold, say number 2. And then it'll call the person that you set onto that particular number. So, for example, if you were to give this to your kids and say, you know, this is like an emergency phone. And this is an emergency phone for them to use. If they want to call mum and dad, all they've got to do is just tap this number two right over here. So, that is a very good feature. Now, overall it is a decent performer. And it is a decent mobile phone. Now, can I recommend it? Well, yes and no. If you have large hands, then I'd say stay well away. If you have uh, medium-sized hands like me, then I would say stay away still. Because it tends to be quite frustrating. It's not really a joy to use like these other phones are and these other budget handsets are. Uh, it's really down to the very, very small 3-inch screen. And if you have small hands, then yeah, this is great for you. But one thing I always tend to do is when I uh, I'm medium-sized hands again, like I said, and I always hold use my uh, hand, well, my palm of my hand here, then I always start tapping with my finger. That's what I do with a keyboard. But I would suggest this more, maybe for the kids. I give this to my younger brother, who's very young, and he's actually enjoyed it. It's easier for him to actually navigate around this compared to me because uh, he has smaller fingers and it's easy for him to navigate around it. This would be perfect for them, you're not breaking the bank and uh, you're giving them a bit extra so you can normally, when you give your kid your, their first or maybe second mobile phone and say use this in case of emergencies in case you ever have to, then this will be uh, perfect for them that not only will they get extra use out of it but it also is very easy for them to make a call, you just set up that speed dial and then they tap and hold two or something to call mum and dad so it's a quicker way for them to call as well so, this mobile phone, I wouldn't recommend it for those of you that really want to experiment with your mobile phone. Me, personally, I would I would stay well away. It's just too small. Many of you would want would uh, get bored of this as well. And you'd want to stay away because the screen is just too small. It is just uh, way too small and too fiddly. And uh, I feel sort of like uh, claustrophobic around the screen, if that makes sense. Because I haven't got much space to sort of do things in. So... I would probably go with something like the HTC Explorer, which I will try to get my hands on to review in the future. A handset like that is much better than a handset like this. Battery life. Well, in my experiences, I've been getting about a day to a day and a half between charges. If I'm using it quite heavily during the day, I get about four to five hours, which is all right. So battery life overall on the whole has been pretty decent. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Eric from ecartman12.blogspot.com. A big thank you to Vodafone for supplying me with this handset to review. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.